I recently had this notification pop up on my work computer. Like all software engineers, I'm both lazy and an introvert. Emails mostly just mean more work for me. Not being able to receive them because my inbox is full sounds pretty good. So that got me thinking. How fast could you fill an entire email inbox? I'm going to be using Gmail for this, not Outlook, because Gmail is easier. So spoilers up front, the theoretical limit for how fast you could fill up a standard Gmail inbox is exactly 5 minutes. How do I know that? Well, unless you pay for extra storage, Google accounts have a 15 gigabyte storage limit. You can receive emails up to 50 megabytes in size, and you can receive a maximum of 60 emails a minute or one per second. So 15 gigabytes divided by 50 megabytes times 60 seconds is five minutes. That's theoretically the best we can do, but can we actually reach that in practice? Let's find out. I had a thought. What if there's a really easy way to do this? Gmail supports email forwarding, so what if I create two email addresses, set them to forward mail to each other, and then send a single email to one of them? Hopefully, the email will just ping pong back and forth, attachments included, and we'll get two full inboxes by just sending a single email. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. Gmail's servers are smart enough to realize that a piece of mail was sent from the same address it would be forwarded to, and just doesn't relay it back to the sender. So that clearly won't work. But maybe we could set up an auto-response message and have those reply to each other. No, that won't work either. This ain't Gmail's first email rodeo, and the day of auto-responses triggering other auto-responses in an infinite loop seem to be over. So we'll have to do this the hard way, just sending lots and lots of emails. So I created a new Gmail address named after my favorite Magic the Gathering card, which is of course MindGoblin. We also need a destination account to send these emails to. I'm a big fan of magnetic and optical data storage media, so we'll call this one tapesandcompactdisks at gmail.com. I'll write a quick script to send some big attachments from one address to the other. I ran into issues doing this almost immediately. First, it turns out that you can only send files adding up to 25 megabytes at a time, even though you can receive emails up to 50 megabytes. This is a big issue, actually, and it means it'll take us twice as long to fill our inbox as I originally estimated. Unfortunately, we can't even compensate for this by using two sending email addresses, each with a 25 megabyte payload, because there's also that 60 message per minute receiving limit. That means this approach almost certainly won't be the best we can do, but let's see if we can get this working anyway to get a good baseline time, then optimize from there. And I sent one whole entire email and immediately got marked as spam. Let's tell Google that we're totally cool with getting lots of emails and get right back to it. Okay, this seems to work. Over the course of a few minutes, I sent more than a gigabyte worth of emails. Very encouraging. Let me throw this inside a loop with a one second wait and try to actually fill the inbox. Remember, 600 emails at one per second or 10 minutes is theoretically the best we can do with a 25 megabyte send limit. But because attachments take some time to upload, looks like roughly three seconds on average, we can't quite send emails that fast. I set this to run for a bit to see the best time we could achieve, and I'm blocked. But we got 295 emails off in 18 minutes for about 9 gigabytes of delivered emails before I started getting error messages. That's about one email every 3.66 seconds, which is not as good as the one email per second that we're aiming for, but we'll take what we can get for now. Looking at these error messages seems to indicate that the issue we ran into is a daily sending limit. I sent a few test emails, then sent 295 emails in a row with big attachments before running into issues, so I'm guessing that's the problem. I'll just wait 24 hours to let it cool off and hope my limit resets. Hey, I thought of something funnier than one Gmail account. Two Gmail accounts. Assuming the sending limit is 300-ish emails per account per day, I'll need two accounts to send the 600 total emails that I need. So I waited a day and gave it another go. I'm having the two sending accounts alternate sending to a third, who is Candice, please tell me, at gmail.com. Around the 200 email point, I checked on the amount of storage that Gmail shows us using, and was surprised to see that we're already showing more than 6.5 gigabytes, which the big brain math people in the audience will notice is more than the 5 gigabytes we'd expect, having sent one third of what should be 15 gigabytes total. By this math, these emails are actually arriving around 32 megabytes in size. This is a bit surprising, as the attachment itself is only 23.7 megabytes, and the body of the email is very short, so not much storage there. But there's stuff like headers in an email too, which increases message size. 
8 megabytes though seems like a lot to me, so I'm not entirely sure where the extra is coming from, but it works to our advantage, so I'm definitely not complaining. Anyway, at this pace, we should hit 15 gigabytes somewhere around the 470 to 480 email mark. Okay, that's a bit more than 470. Let's see where we're at. Uh, what? So it turns out that despite the big scary warnings, Google won't actually start restricting your ability to receive emails immediately. Which, I gotta be honest, is kind of disappointing, but I guess it makes sense that there's not a hard cutoff. I'm going to score this run by calculating the time logged on the first message that the target inbox received until the timestamp on the email that actually tipped us over the 15 gigabyte limit. In this case, email number 471. So that's 1249.09 to 1313.59, which gives us 24 minutes and 50 seconds. That's better than the roughly 36 minutes and 36 seconds we would have needed to receive 600 messages, but still not nearly as good as we would like. Remember, the theoretical best we can do based on Gmail's limits is exactly 5 minutes, so we can almost certainly improve this time by a significant amount. What if we don't use Gmail to send the emails? There are lots of companies out there that offer emails as a service. They'll send emails for you in bulk, and even offer cool extra stuff like templates, nice formatting, and delivery confirmation. Oh, sorry, did I say cool extra stuff? I meant trash features. All I want is to send lots of big emails as fast as possible, and everything else is worthless. To my surprise, this doesn't seem to be a common use case, because looking at the services out there, we actually don't have too many good options. Some of these services actually have message size limits less than Gmail, but most are right around 25 megabytes. Most services say, ooh, please don't send big emails, clients don't like big emails. Well, I'm the client, and in the words of one of the greatest musical minds of all time, I want them real thick and juicy. Fortunately, I found one service that isn't useless for my purposes and allows us to reach 40 megabytes per attachment. Amazon's creatively named Simple Email Service. There are two ways you can send email with SES. You can verify a domain using some DNS records, which lets you send emails from any address at that domain, or you can use an existing email and have it send you a link to confirm you own it, then use that email as the address. Again, I immediately started running into problems. It seems that SES does not always play nicely with Gmail. The messages I sent from my very cool and legitimate domain, uh, this, never showed up in my Gmail inbox. But when I tried using a normal Gmail address that I verified, it also didn't work. It was pretty late at this point, so I gave up and went to bed. But when I woke up, I'd finally received the emails I sent the night before from my verified Gmail address in SES, hours after I actually sent them. This was discouraging. If we're speedrunning here, there's absolutely no point to an email service that waits hours before delivering the messages we send. Maybe this was just a fluke though, because I tested it again the next day and found messages were delivered pretty quickly. So weird, but hopefully not a breaking issue. One thing that might be a real issue though is that I'm limited to sending 200 emails per day with SES. More than that and I'd have to contact Amazon and request production access, which I think might be a tough sell. But fortunately, the limit is 200 emails per day per region, so if I just use two different regions, I can send myself a maximum of 16 gigabytes worth of emails, which should be plenty. Let's give that a go. Uh, what the heck is going on here? Emails are not being delivered anywhere near the order I sent them, and some are not being delivered at all. So it looks like what I saw before is an actual problem. Well, I looked through the AWS help articles, and according to them, basically, sometimes it'd be like that. There's this thing called soft bouncing, where sometimes the recipient will rate limit emails coming from the sender and reject an email for now, though it can be retried later. They suggest that to verify whether soft bouncing is the issue, you can try sending to different ISPs. Oh boy, can I? If only there was a managed service that did that for me and already had metrics about things like bounces. Maybe a dashboard for soft bounces too? Freaking AWS taking over the whole market. Ugh, whatever, anyway, there are a few different things I can think of to work around this issue. It's time to change around the setup a little bit. Firstly, I'm going to use more SES regions. Two is just about enough to send the amount of emails I need, but given how slow delivery seems to be, I think I want to send way more emails than I actually need, as many as three times more, 
and for that I probably want at least four more regions. Second, it's possible that the pipe from SES to a single Gmail address is only so wide. In other words, maybe Gmail's servers will throttle messages from SES to a single Gmail address if it gets too many. But I demonstrated with my first experiment that Gmail to Gmail mailing doesn't seem to have the same issue. So in order to try and eliminate throttling between SES and Gmail, I'm going to try sending to a few different Gmail addresses which will then forward to my target inbox, which I hope should cut down on the amount of mail that's very delayed. I think I can also do something about the sending speed, not just the delivery speed. So far, I've been sending one email at a time, which means that it takes a few seconds to upload the attachment before the email can actually send. To speed this up, I can run the program on a few different computers at the same time. Running a few instances in parallel will let me send more emails in the same amount of time, so this upload delay won't slow me down. Let's give it another go with these changes. Crap. A bit faster, but still quite bad. Gmail definitely seems to throttle emails from SES, and not just on a per receiver basis, so having more accounts forward to the target doesn't really help. Well, it pains me to say this, but I'm going to have to go ahead and say officially that I can't recommend SES as a service to use if you want to spam a bunch of emails at yourself. Our final time with SES was 29 minutes and 15 seconds, almost 5 minutes slower than we managed with Gmail. It turns out SES was a total bust, but I want to try one more thing for good measure, because I really want to do better than 20 minutes. We'll try using Gmail again with the same setup we tried for SES. That is, programs running on different machines, each spamming messages at the target. Remember, when we used Gmail before, each email arrived at roughly 32 megabytes in size. So if we can send about one per second, we should be able to make it around 8 minutes. But realistically, I'd be thrilled to get sub 10 minutes, so that's what I'm shooting for. Accounting for upload delay, we'll need one final Gmail account for this, though. Mm, chronicligma at gmail.com should do. Let's give this one last try and see how it goes. Things get off to a great start. Look at all these emails flooding in. Wow, so punctual and in order. Wow. And you know what? This just continues working all the way through. Our inbox steadily fills up, and by the 472nd email, we're all done. The time from the first received email to the last received email was 7 minutes and 51 seconds. So not only did we improve our time, we smashed through that sub 10 minute goal. Below 8 minutes is absolutely fantastic. And 7 minutes 51 seconds? Hey, that's 471 seconds. It took us 472 emails to fill our inbox, which is almost exactly the 1 per second receiving limit, actually a little bit better. That means the only possible way to improve on this time is to increase the size of the message we're sending. In other words, we've reached one of the two requirements for hitting the absolute best possible time. If the Gmail API allowed attachments of 50 megabytes, I'm pretty confident we could get very close and maybe even reach the 5 minute theoretical minimum time. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, let me know by telling me I should seek professional help in the comments below.